verse 11 says, The Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, and the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Therefore now, not tomorrow, the choice in America lies either we either we concentrate in praying or we pray in concentration camps. Make a choice. If you're under 40 years of age, I don't see any reason why you should be in bed after 4 o'clock in the morning. John Wesley met with his friends, and they were friends. John Newton that wrote Amazing Grace. William Cowper that wrote, uh, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. And a bunch of other intellectuals, and they met at 4 o'clock in the morning. Unless, he said, we prayed at 10 at night till 4 in the morning, and then we stood up and raised our hands and sang the doxology. You don't need to do that now when you're a popular church, do you? When people are tired and you can spend anything you like on the church, do as you like. Get some nice soft seats so they'll sleep better during the sermon. Where are the fasting, weeping, praying pastors? Now he doesn't let them off again. He says that word in verse 12. Then 15 he says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. In Zion, not to the world. I'm not worried about a revival in the world. I'm, I'm worried about a revival in the church. Getting cleaned up and purified and sanctified. There's a king in America. I'll tell you his name. The king of America. And I'll tell you the name of his queen. The king is called sport and his life is called entertainment. I've almost made a vow today. I won't go to any gathering of men about revival unless they lay all night between the altar and the doorpost. Are we trying to improve on God? Oh, well, Rainier's arrogant. He, he talks too badly. He won't come and... No, I won't go. Why should I? This is God's prescription. It's not Wesley's. It's not Finney's. It's not Spurgeon's. It's God's. Wesley said in his day, gossip is the curse of the church. Gossip, slander, criticism, ridicule. I've been to ministers' meetings where they told borderline jokes. Then somebody gets a bit bold and tells a blue joke and everybody laughs. I've never been to a dinner with ministers yet with any intelligence there. They don't talk about God, they talk about football. Talk about their Sunday school numbers. What's your golf handicap? We got dirty preachers like that in the pulpit. No wonder the church is dirty. There's a wonderful book by J.I. Packer. Not because he's English, but he's a great preacher. It's called Knowing God. I copied this from it today. Well, I've paraphrased it a little myself. This generation has unashamedly sold itself to the gods of greed. I put a sign there. Greed in Christian circles today is called prosperity, but it's still greed anyhow. But this generation has sold itself without blushing to the gods of greed and sex and pride and self-will. But the church is mumbling on about the goodness of God and we're as near hell as a nation as ever we do. Oh, preach the goodness. But listen, there's another side to the coin. It says the goodness and severity of God. 